this opportunity came up craigslist thursday night we looked at it <laughs> rain in worst time to buy a car um but it was down in uh like seal beach area um bought it from i believe the original owner's grandson wow um bought new and bob bob smith volvo uh down that way all original original um window sticker records everything so went and looked at it you know checked the paint all original paint we're like oh man um so gave the put my deposit down on the guy you know that night thursday night and we went back and bought it friday um drove it home All right, everyone, welcome back to another morning of Anatomy. Today we have Jacob. Jacob, thank you so much for making the time morning. for us, man. Yeah. Good morning, good morning. So tell us, man, what do you drive? So this is a 97 Volvo 850R wagon. Um, coming up on two years of ownership. Had a, this is my fifth Volvo uh, in the family. Actually, I grew up with Volvo wagons, grew up driving, uh, learned how to drive when I was 15, 16 years old in Volvo wagons. Um, always wanted one, it stuck. Um, but I had an S60R before this, and even when I had the S60R, I really wanted a wagon. This opportunity came up, Craigslist, Thursday night. We looked at it, <laughs> rain in, worst time to buy a car. Um, but it was down in uh, like Seal Beach area. Um, bought it from, I believe, the original owner's grandson. Wow. Um, bought new and Bob, Bob Smith Volvo uh, down that way, all original, original um, window sticker records, everything. So. Went and looked at it, you know, checked the paint, all original paint. We're like, oh man, this is this man, is the, you this check is, the paint and everything. This is the one. So I still have my S sixty R, but I knew it was gonna go quick. Um, so gave the put my deposit down on the guy, you know, that night, Thursday night, and we went back and bought it Friday. Um, drove it home, and um, obviously didn't look like this when 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 I bought it. It was one hundred percent stock. Um, the way you wanted it though. The way I, the yeah. way you want one, yeah. Um, um, and what was your vision for it? Uh, well, it was my daily at the time, <laughs> so it was supposed to stay functional. Functional, um, not this low, not these brakes, but but just functional. I really wanted an R wagon, but with the use of the wagon, this thing has a third row seat even even in the back where the kids sit. Uh, backwards it's a facing it, that way right face the car so you can make funny faces at the cars and stuff like, like that. the old school mercedes yeah, yeah. got so, it i didn't know um, that cool it wasn't supposed to be like this but <laughs> um once it became my non-daily driver i was like all right uh, tell us jacob what do, we, what do we have going on in the front so um we got the euro e-code lenses with the euro lights um the euro lights had the dual filament Mm. Um, so there's a little parking light up here and then you got your turn signal down here the euro lenses um, how's the wiring on that uh, to convert so it was pretty much a plug-and-play it was a different um, um, like a socket harness mm -hmm. um, literally unplugged the the US spec one and it plugged right into the to the Sweet. euro spec okay. so zero zero anything over there it was actually really cool how it worked out um, just a little Volvo Composites uh, fiberglass lip. Um, that guy's out of the UK, um, makes some really nice stuff. Um, he actually makes a new version that comes out a little bit further that I'll put on eventually. Um, but these bumpers are getting harder and harder to come by and in good shape and in good condition. Um, and with this car being so low, this is kind of like my my insurance. <laughs> <laughs> and so. speaking of that, how, how big is the aftermarket support on this car? Um, IPD USA is probably one of the biggest and best. Um, it's out there. You just really have to look. Okay. Um, Cause they did modify these cars pretty heavily back then. Um, but the cars, you know, it's a 97. So it's hard to find anything new. Um, but like I said, it's out there. Um, a lot of companies are, tr interested in this now you got elevate uh uh volvo which is does all the new stuff the um um they're looking at they've actually talked to me on this car about making some things for it and what do we want to do and what you know what should so um there is some up and coming interest in these That's cars awesome. especially with the radwood stuff mm -hmm. coming around and the whole 90s and 80s era cars and uh, i think this is an ipd grill as well 
Um, kind of looks stock, but it just eliminates the uh, Volvo. Super clean. Uh, clean and simple, almost like yeah. it could have came that way. That's yeah. my biggest thing. I always build cars to almost like they could have came this way, um, but just a little better. Cool, cool. And then uh, tell us about your suspension. What, what kind of suspension So the suspension's on uh, BC coilovers. Um, like I said, the aftermarket stuff is out there. You just gotta find it. Um, BC makes these, and I believe KW does as oh, wow. well. Um, I just don't know um, availability and if they have it on the shelf ready to make or if they got to make something. But they do show a part number and they do show something listed for this. That's pretty cool. And um, ultimately, I, I would like, there's nothing wrong with the BCs, but I just like KW. Um, I've had them before on some other cars and, you know, you never know. These BCs are great. They got me the stance that I want, but just, you know. There's always something to improve. Yeah, or yeah, it's just better. It's you know, it's it's <laughs> um, it's just a better better build in my opinion, um, better product. Um, so, so, we got this. Any other suspension pieces? No. Uh, well, I mean, sway bars and um, subframe, you know, bushings and you know stuff like that. Uh, IPD sway bars, um, and that's really about it for suspension. I didn't just like I said, it didn't need a lot, but. Everything that I did, I, I would have put up like a like the what's that power flex, the oh. polyurethane bushings and stuff like that to tighten it up. Um, but suspension wise, that's pretty much it. Cool. Tell us about your little brake setup that we have. So, on. yeah, the brake <laughs> setup is the newest addition to the car. I just finished that a few months ago. Um, it's Jesus. a Porsche 986 um, fronts with Volvo S60R rears. Four piston in the back, four piston up front, two piece rotors. Uh, I think there was a gyro disc. Uh, waited a few weeks to have those made. Again, stuff's out there, but it's just not sitting on the shelf. So gyro disc made them, but it took forever and they were pretty pricey. But knowing with this wheel setup that I had and the brakes that I was gonna put in this car, I really wanted a nice rotor um, to, to, to show off. You know, what especially other, with the Porsche what other brakes. components did you have to get? Uh, upper control arms? Well, so, um, I cool. modified the spindle. Um, some tabs shaved off and, you know, um, most most part it fit. Um, whoever had, these were actually somebody's takeoffs already off of an 850R. <laughs> so it worked pretty good. He did all the homework. Um, <laughs> because uh, the brackets fit. Like I said, you just had to modify the spindle to get the bracket to fit and, and, and it all bolted on That's zero crazy. zero problems, zero issues. Uh, put some braided lines on there while it, you know while it was all apart. Um, painted the calipers as close as I could to the blue um, just to kind of try it all tie it all in together. Um, Speaking of yeah, the blue cab, what kind of wheel entire setup do you have? So this is the new 1552 chicane wheel. Um, it's um, part of their super touring line. Mm -hmm. They have another, I think the other one's a podium, uh, a little more multi-spoke. Um, but this is an 18, eight and a half setup on- um, Wow. Yeah, pretty, I didn't think I was gonna fit them, but they fit well. Um, did some homework with Matt at 1552 to get the right tire mm -hmm. profile. Uh, to get the car as low as we want with the right wheel and still not look, you know, like a rubber band on there. Um, and be comfortable. And be comfortable. Um, rides well. Um, surprisingly well. Um, I was really, really worried. <laughs> Sorry, you um, you but shocked it, yourself there. <laughs> but it rides really well. So um, I'm very, very happy with the setup. Um, it looks perfect for the car. It looks like, you know, the old British touring car, like it should have. Um, like it should have came, could have came, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. And then yeah. the rear, what kind of wing do you have? So that's a stock wing um, accessory that would have came with Volvo this year um, with the third brake light. Some of the earlier ones did not have the third brake light, but this one does. Um, has V70 tail lights. So just uh, the next generation of this model was, was the same body, um, but they changed a few things. This car should have the um, orange up here, but I liked the clear, works really well with the white. Um, did a wiper delete just got lucky found a rubber plug my dad runs a body shop and it fit the <laughs> it whole fit. perfect so so it looks pretty cool something you don't see every day uh, you know a wiper delete on a on a volvo wagon um so and i, and I see a little tip hanging out yeah. there so tell us a little bit about your exhaust system so the exhaust system is an ipd um turbo back so it does have a three inch downpipe um 
Actually, the, I actually changed the exhaust. This is not an IPD anymore. This is uh, Jet Tex. I got that through Snab. Uh, they're a pretty, um, pretty good Volvo tuner. Uh, they make a lot of turbo components and turbo tubes and ducting and uh, intakes. Um, but the IPD exhaust was a little too loud for my taste. So this Jet Tex is a little bit more quieter. It's a dual resonator, um, but it's still, I kept the uh, three inch downpipe up front. Wow. Um, just a subtle sound. These things do sound great. Um, you know, they're a five cylinder inline, um, but I just, I guess I'm getting too old and uh, it rattled a lot. <laughs> so, uh, so I went with this Jet Tex and I'm pretty happy with it. So. Sweet. Is a little bit different. Um, I got that through Viva Performance, and it's basically just a rewrapped stock wheel, but they put the thumb sturts in it, uh, make the wheel a little thicker, and then the, you can pick whatever color stitching you want down here. But this wheel did come uh, similar to this with the leather, and then it was a, a, a lighter leather down here, I believe. Uh, but I went with the Alcantara um, to kind of pull in the Alcantara, the seats, um, and then yellow is a is a play on uh, an older earlier version of these mm -hmm. where they were um the t5rs and then they were that cream yellow um black and i even think green um but just to try and pull up you know a play on that um my other thought was to pull in more of the yellow here eventually um put some yellow stitching on the door cards um maybe my shifter e-brake and then in the armrest just to kind of Pull it all together. Continue with the theme. Yeah, um, IPD boost gauge in the pillar, um, just to keep an eye on things. Um, other than that, it's Simplistic. pretty much yeah. Tell us, Jacob, what are we staring at? So this is actually this car came with a 2.3 liter um, inline five. Um, they were probably 240, 250 horse. Um, unfortunately, when I did buy this car, it, everything checked out, everything was beautiful, but my mechanic noticed somebody had JB welded the back of the block. So he's like, you need, a you need a block, you know, and you need, and it could go tomorrow, it could go next year, but you should get a block. So um, I just told him, all right, you know, start looking for one. When you find one, let me know. Within a week or two, he found a later model, 2.5 liter, um, <laughs> inline five from a newer Volvo. Um, actually from an R model. So th that motor was a 300 horsepower um, stock, good motor, had 70,000 miles on it, was out of a total. And he's like, we need to get this. So I'm like, all right, let's get it. <laughs> so, and then it snowballed from there um, as far as kind of just, again, period correct items, as well as trying to find the best product for that part that I needed. Um, cause there are a few vendors, but I really, when I was building this, I wanted reliability more than I, more than I wanted anything. Um, you can get some pretty crazy numbers out of this car. Um, but like I said, I wanted reliability. I wasn't looking for horsepower. I was like, looking for crazy numbers. I knew it would be better than what I had. So I was mm -hmm. okay with that. Um, but I just really wanted the best component for that part that I needed when I was building it. So, so you said it was out of the R? Hey, uh, did you do anything internally? So no, because it was um, only had, you know, 70,000 on it, we left it alone. Um, I think we did some machining to, to get, you know, some things to fit and, and cleaned it up, mm -hmm. um, but didn't do anything, didn't do, you know, piston, di didn't do nothing. So le left it alone. Um, we did rebuild the turbo. This is, has the Mitsubishi TD-04. Um, I think we did a 20 blade um, housing and then nine in and 11 out, I think. I don't remember, it's been a bit. Um, but just cleaned it up. Um, and again, with the snab intake parts, um, forged, you know, uh, recirculating blow off. Um, just did a Nishimoto um, oil catch can. Um, this was on the car when I got the car. Again, kind of a period correct mod. This is this old MSD blaster. Um, ha has an original TME Sweden uh, strut bar. That was an aftermarket thing. Volvo did sell um, factory strut bars. This is actually a Volvo part, um, believe it or not. So I thought that was pretty cool. It's an original carbon fiber piece, um, wow. I believe from a T5R, and it was even in the accessory catalog um, on the earlier ones. Um, 
It does have, I'm trying to think of the brand, a Dew 88 intercooler, okay. which is sandwiched in between here. I just put the Dew 88 um, aluminum radiator. Uh, this is a snab rip kit, it re, you know, re, -inver re inverts the, uh, the air. It should have had a pipe over here, something like that. Um, I am working on a battery relocation kit. I'll put it in the trunk um, just to kind of clean it up up here. Um, there is a coil on plug mod that a lot of people are doing with these things because the stock and stock ignition only goes so far. Um, that is something I'm working on. What, are you pushing for more power? Um, I know you did mention a uh, uh, manual swap. What is that, um, a six or a five? So that'll be what? a five. Um, it's out of a the coupe this year, uh, which was a C70 um, coupe. So it'll have a five speed. Um, you know, I'll do the right flywheel and all that. Um, plug um, and play? Just, yeah, it'll all be a plug and play cool. thing. I, it might have to reflash the tune um, to accept the manual, but I don't think so. But I am looking at when I do do that, I want to do that coil on plug, um, you know, just to better the ignition, uh, make it faster because, you know, it, it, yeah. it, it, it's so, you know, it's, it's old, old older technology. technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and now that's kind of the thing to do. We'll put the battery in the back. Um, that'll just be a couple small little things that, you know, people might not even notice, um, you know. Um, but that, again, not I don't want crazy numbers. I really like reliability. I like getting in this car knowing that I can drive it anywhere I mm -hmm. want to and it, and, it, and it won't leave me hanging. Right. Um, gas mileage is really good. Um, when I did drive it every day, yeah, it's premium, but, you know, it, it works really well. All right, Jacob, so thank you so much for uh, taking the time to uh, show us your car. Any small, f you know, we already touched base on the future plans, but uh, any plans that you maybe you left out and any shout outs? Um, biggest plan is going to be probably the, the manual swap, um, a tune, working on the ignition stuff, stuff like that, just to help it run better. Um, but as far as what you see, this is probably going to be it for a while. I say that, you know, and even when my family <laughs> sees that, they're gonna go, you lie. Um, Cause I have a wheel problem. Um, anytime something new, something I, I love, I love wheels. It's, it's everyone that it knows me knows wheels. So, um, but this is perfect, you know, with the setup, current setup. Um, I do have a VST uh, aftermarket front bumper for this car. VST was a really big tuner for Volvos back then. And I have an original VST front bumper um, that I will probably be working on uh, and we'll put on this thing. Um, looks pretty much stock as far as everything fits, but it does have some uh, side vents right here and I think the lip comes out a little bit further. A bit more um, aggressive. A little more aggressive. Um, that's And that's a pretty cool piece that, you know, at the time um, was, was big. They're, they didn't make a lot of them and to, to, to have one and ready to go on is pretty cool, so. Um, that's Any shout outs? probably it. Um, shout outs would probably be honestly my my dad, my parents for for the love of cars and, and getting me into this mess. Um, <laughs> but I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm passing it on to, to my son Max, um, my mechanic Mark. I wouldn't have a Volvo if it wasn't for him, um, just because I can call him and rely on him. Any questions, concerns, issues that I have, he's always there and does does you know. Um, the Lord's work as far as I'm concerned on these things um, because Volvos are so different you know and, and um, he knows he knows them like crazy um, Matt Crook with these wheels um, just working real close with him to get them to get them the right set you know set size offset tires and you know perfect for the car um, that was a, that was kind of an honor to get to know him and to get to work with him um, and put these wheels on on my car um george at viva um helping me with all these parts and and pieces uh in this build the steering wheel um george was really good to me uh we got a lot of parts through him uh, a lot of visits um so that was really cool um man those are just just a few of the many my wife were putting up with me she probably <laughs> loved the most important to, one uh, yeah because I don't know if she'll ever, she understands it, but she knows how much it means to me and how much cars, and I mean, I just, 
got the new little hot wheel and spent three weeks making it my own and painting it and lowering it and you know and she's like really what why and you know so there you go um but um those are probably the biggest ones right now would be you know um the people that i mentioned um i'm sure there's others that i forget and i'm very sorry um but those are um those are some of the some of the ones like that mean the most right now that if it wasn't for them i wouldn't have this car and it wouldn't be the way it is well um so those are the big ones jacob thank you so much man yeah. thanks man <laughs> i really appreciate yeah. it i really enjoyed learning about it um and the fact that it's a wagon i know there's a lot of older dudes and some younger dudes are thinking like hell yes yeah yep keep the wagon sporty yep. yep so thank you so much man yeah, i appreciate thank it you. appreciate your time thank you so much